am a proud member of the Seashell Nation out here on the Sunshine Coast and uh, in British Columbia. And so honored uh, to be on the traditional territories of the Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh and Squamish territories today. And so excited to talk to you about my experience and uh, my passion for networking, authentic relationships, effective communication. I, a little history about me is I, uh, I worked for the Squamish Nation, which is the second largest nation in British Columbia for 13 years. And I was their economic development officer and supported small business and procurement. And I got to vet um, proponents that would come in and want to do business with the Squamish Nation and knowing that we would vet them based on uh, sharing of core values, uh, Indigenous participation plans, how our partnerships would go um, out of their way for authentic engagement and what I think in my history of working with the Squamish Nation. And then after I went to Squamish, I started working for industry for Alltech uh, Limited Partnership. And with that, I had relationships with over 150 different First Nations in British Columbia and on the opposite end of the spectrum, hearing everything with my um, collaborations and my relationships with other First Nations such as Musqueam and Tsleil-Waututh and of course working for Squamish but West Bank and the Okanagan Nations that up in Treaty 8, what um, what was expected? What was the best kind of communication, what are the best hints for industry going in and having authentic engagement relationships with Indigenous communities and Indigenous communities having authentic relationships with partnerships and the most effective way of how we can really grow together for uh, reconciliation action, I used, I'd like to call it, where we actually walk the talk and, um, and work effectively together. So I also have a TV show coming out. I can plug that. It's called The Bears Lair. It's going to be airing September 11th. And it's 18 entrepreneurs from all over Canada, Indigenous entrepreneurs from all over Canada that are going to compete for $100,000. And it's all about co-opetition, not, not competition. And you're really going to see that it's uplift, uplifting and it's going to rise up our communities and show each other skill sets and, and gifts. So I'll start my presentation now. So thank you all for joining. So developing more effective partnerships often requires a shift in thinking. So when I think about the best investment, and this is coming from, um, it can come from a nation side, but it also can come from, a, from an industry side as well. Finding the best investment of the resources that as I relationship build and I develop partnerships, what is the best way for me to network, to communicate? What are my goals? What is my expertise? Instead of focusing on doing a kind of a good job and going to different networking events and different industries and trying to outsource myself to the maximum capacity, really, really focusing on the eye on the prize and who you want to develop authentic relationships with, how much time you have to commit to those relationships, and the best way to, to source out your time and your team and your budget. Next. Next slide, oh, thank you. So this is a continuous cycle, and I'm gonna talk about a couple things today. Is network is nurturing. So developing effective, authentic relationships within the communities and within industry that you want to deal with. Authenticity builds relationships. So what is authenticity? Um, how, can, how can we really uh, focus on, on having developing really great relationships with either the nations or industry that, so we can work together effectively and maximize the benefits to the nations and to our companies? And effective communication takes the five C's, which I'm going to get into a little bit later. Next slide. So networking is nurturing. So how do we create new and stronger connections? How do we get to know and trust people beyond the organizations? Um, how do we identify mutually beneficial opportunities? And how do we keep long-term relationships? Next slide. 
So how do we how do we connect? Right. So all of us have been to events that we that we've connected with people. And my, my best advice is, is to join sponsor um, an event. And these can be things like the can like can do. It can be NABOC, the National Aboriginal Business Opportunities Conference. It can be the Canadian Council for Aboriginal Business, not just um, actually joining the Canadian Council for Aboriginal Business, but perhaps finding about their PAR program on how we can be better in industry and keep track and have data of working with Indigenous um, employees, what our core culture, corporate culture is like, how can we improve, how can we celebrate days and acknowledge days such as Orange Shirt Day and Indigenous Peoples Day, um, be aware of when the AFN is in town. Regional, uh, the BC Achievement Foundation, the BC AFN Summit, um, and then of course, sorry, next. We can talk about um, the grassroots level. So what, what I do is when I work with Indigenous communities, um, and I worked with about 150 in my career with Alltech, is career fairs, uh, golf tournaments, uh, consistent communication with the, with the nation that you're trying to work with on how you can give back, if not on a financial level, then how can you volunteer? What, what is the needs of the community? And what I do is I usually create an Indigenous participation plan where I go through with a community with either the ECDEV officers or their team or chief and council, depending on the governance of that nation, and talk about what I can do to be a better partner. I need a list of all of the career fairs. I need a list of all of the fundraisers. I need to know um, if there's anything that I can support with the elders, where it, be, where it can be with um, elders hampers. Um, contributions for Christmas, any kind of sports teams that are doing some fundraising, anything that I can volunteer with, especially money's great for sure. But how I can volunteer and get myself into um, embedded into a community where I really do get to know the leadership, where I really do get to know the community department heads, where I do get to know the leaders, the young and the youth of the community of the community, how I can listen to the elders and the knowledge keepers of the community on how I can be a better partner and how I can be involved and what kind of help or assistance or synergies I can have with those departments. Next. So networking is nurturing is not only um, attending those events, but attending those events on a regular basis. And I know when I worked for the Squamish Nation, we used to have the Squamish Nation Trade Center fundraiser, which raised funds for all of the students that were there. The students were paid for to go to school. Their education was paid for to go to school, but their living expenses were not. So whether it be transportation or assistant with lunches or what have you. So we used to do a fundraiser every single year. And the same people the, and new partners would join because Squamish you know, probably has about 180 partners now in my experience. But the same partners would come to, and support the fundraisers. And then you start to recognize each other. And then, you know, you're sitting at a table and you're saying, oh, I haven't seen you for a year. What, what is it you do again? And then really provoke some conversation on how to find employees. You're going to you're going to get to know um, the same players that come, how to how to get to find employees, whether it's with the employment and training divisions of of each nation, subcontractors, if you're doing a capital project within indigenous territory. What subtract subcontractors do you share with other partnerships or can recommend to other partnerships that are going to do the best job that have been vetted by the nation and how we can support each other? And as I said, co-opetition opposed to competition. When I used to work at Alltech, we did transmissions and we did maintenance, but we subcontracted a lot of electrical, um, flagging, security, fencing, corporate gifting. So how we can find employees so that we can help be a better partner and authentic within different communities. Finding social in, impact initiatives that matter. So as I said, I, anytime that I would ever develop a relationship with a nation um, or when I was working for a nation trying to develop um, a relationship with industry, I would get out an authentic and you know, an indigenous participation plan is what I called it. 
And when I was on the nation side, I would provide all of the initiatives on our wish list. What would you like to support? We need help with elders. We need help with kids camps. We need help with bursaries and education. We would love support if you could volunteer at our career fair. We would love to you to donate um, some swag to um, an event that we're doing. So finding social impact initiatives that matter um, and having that consistent communication with the nation and maximize marketing grassroots driven. So when what I love, I have so many great and I'm so thankful that I have generous relationships with um, great nations like the Musqueam Nation and with Tsleil-Waututh Nation. Anytime I need information from somebody um, or I want to recommend somebody, um, I can phone up one of the nations that I know and they pull me into their circles of influence. Who do you recommend for this? How can I I need somebody that can do business plans or grant writing, or I am a grant writer and I do you need, know anyone that needs any help. So it's a great way to network, not just by business with nation to nation or industry with, with nation, but also maximizing um, your relationship within the nation so that you're called the next time when something comes up for direct award or something comes up where there's an opportunity for RFP or preferred partnerships. Next. Next slide, okay, thanks. Authenticity builds relationships. So we have a bridge here because it is a two-way street. So it takes time for both sides to listen, learn, and understand. Um, not all industry knows how to work with nations and not all nations know how to work with industry in different fields. So we have to be real. Um, I know that uh, authenticity now, we there was something called the... Uh, the flavor of the day for Squamish about 10 years ago was the wood fiber LNG project. And I had about literally 20, 30 emails a day with people that wanted to be a part of Squamish and be a part of uh, direct award opportunities and benefits with our impact benefit agreement negotiations. And I don't know how many times that I've uh, heard from industry, whether it was BC Hydro or Fortis or wood fiber or what have you, that somebody would give me a phone call and talk for five minutes and then that would be it um you know sorry we already have a partner for this and then i would hear that on the rfp that they put a check the box of consultation and which is the biggest pain point for a lot of nations authentic consultation does not mean one phone call what what i recommend for anybody that's in industry and you probably know this already but looking through the RFP and seeing the indigenous um, the indigenous needs of, of that RFP. What do we have to do? How do we approach? Because I find that uh, I've worked with many different companies where it's such an afterthought. They're like, oh my God, I didn't realize that we had to uh, talk to the nation about this first before we do all the rest of the work on the RFP. So it's the backwards cart. What you should do is when you're looking at a 300 page or whatever, um, amount of pages for an RFP is go right to the Indigenous section of what is required. And even if something isn't required and you have a partnership listed anyway. So current capacity and needs, um, be real. What is it that, uh, what is it for authenticity that you can provide for the nation? When I do an Indigenous participation plan, I have all my deliverables that I can do. If uh, the nation doesn't have a directory for member owned businesses and small business procurement, then uh, in my past job, I offered funds from my department so that I could assist in hiring a summer student to develop a membership owned business directory. So that not only could it be utilized for myself from Alltech, but it can also be used for other proponents and other partnerships within that, you know, industry relationship. But it also um, helps elevate the entrepreneurs within the community so that they have a better chance of working within their own territory and be having a place at the economic table. That could be corporate gifting, that could be janitorial, it could be catering, it could be uh, art installations, it could be small excavator jobs. We don't know because we don't have it. So the current capacity for the nation for industry 
is if there is a directory that exists. So when you're negotiating, you come in and you're negotiating something with, um, with a nation that you've already taken a look at that business directory and you've already done an internal highlight of what services or artisans or what have you that you would be able to work with. And that's what I mean when I say be real. So if we have an Indigenous participation plan and you sign off and I sign off on it, then Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, we're going to review that and make sure that we're both on the same page. What has worked and what hasn't? So being honest with, you know, we, we went to the career fair and we didn't really feel that there was enough support or we think this could have been different. So having that open level of communication from industry, because as a nation, we'll tell you, we'll tell you what's, what's not going right. Um, but I think on the, on the other side, if, um, if an industry partner hires one of my community members and they're not living up to the expectations, I would like to be aware of that as well so that we can give some constructive feedback, get that individual up to capacity or, um, just know the expectations straight from the beginning. So what has worked and what hasn't. Following up on commitments that I was talking about, I so uh, recommend an Indigenous participation plan for any nation uh, to have. I went to, when I worked for Squamish, I went to every single department and said, please give me your, your wish list, whether it would be uh, employment and training, whether it would be health and wellness, whether it would be the education department, whether it would be the little one school, um, whether it be the elders uh, program, what have you, please give me some idea about if you could have a pool of funds that could support one of your initiatives, what would it be? Having those listed and then the partner can come in and they can take a look and say, you know, elders are really close to our heart and there are knowledge keepers and this is where I want to put my efforts. And it doesn't mean you can't, you can't do everything, but you can, if your mandate as a company is for youth, if it's for elders, if it's employment and training, if it's for entrepreneurism, at least something is listed. So following up on the commitments, because you have something in black and white, that sign that's agreed upon that you have. The benefits of reporting and being transparent is it builds trust. So everybody's busy everybody's busy and sometimes reporting gets to the wayward, but I'll be very, very diligent with reporting and being transparent and knowing what works and what doesn't work. So in an indigenous participation plan, if I say that I wanna hire four people and then I have in my, in my side in my, in my document notes that this person didn't work out for this reason, you know, or, or this business excelled and, I'm, and five stars, then I would like to know about that so that we can be the best, most effective partners. And demonstrating dedication to the community. And that's part of what Indigenous Participation Plan does. So going out and volunteering, I've got a, a great example there, Brad, Brad Tangier from, um, from Norland, which is a construction company, was one of our very first partners. And so was Dean Montgomery from Alltech, was one of our very first partners. And they would show up in an event half an hour early, because I'm usually planning the events and running my runoff ragged, but they would show up a half an hour early and they would be the last ones to leave. So they would help set up and then they would always help clean up. And they would always phone beforehand and say, is there anything that you forgot that you need us to pick up? Is, you know, it's like coming to someone's house for dinner and being a guest. And it was so nice. And that's what really makes people stand out because sometimes our budgets are limited and we're under restraints, but it doesn't mean that we can't volunteer our time, show up early because a lot of leadership gets there early. A lot of the people, the decision makers that you want to make time with that you don't usually get one-on-one -on -one with are usually there early or they stay after. And it gives you an opportunity to meet them, not on Zoom, not in a formal meeting and, and have that relationship building. And the more people see you, the more you're going to be noticed. Next slide. So um, I have uh, I have my dream camp. Uh, part of the Bears Lair show um, is I have the TV show, and then I have a, a website that's dedicated to entrepreneurism and our sponsors to talk about initiatives and and um, 
campaigns and what have you, and how we can help entrepreneurs as a whole, federal, provincial grants, et cetera. My third level of the Bears Lair is dream camps. And these are camps, uh, Indigenous youth dream, entrepreneur dream camps. And we go into a community, myself and my team go into a community, and we facilitate a dream camp for kids for three days and teach them all about entrepreneurism. I mean, these kids are youth, pardon me, are 12 to 18 years old. And I just facilitated a camp in Six Nations last week. And there were 15 youth, um, 12 of them were 12, two of them were 13 and one was 14 years old to talk about entrepreneurism. And Moneris, Man um, which is, as everybody knows, when you use your, your debit card or your visa was one of our sponsors. And our sponsor includes, it is $25,000 and it includes a year's worth of marketing on the Bears Lair, but it also includes a kid's camp. This is one of our, one of our options. So easily Moneris could have said, here, here's a check for $25,000. There you go. Super. Let us know how the camp went. But they didn't. And they're really interested in making a difference and mandating and making a difference. So they got an Indigenous speaker from the territory to come and talk about their business and, and how um, greater transactions and being able to electronic fund transfers and what have you has changed their business, but also he had a really cool business. It's a, it's a, it's a booth, a soundproof booth that's $5,000 that people can record music in. And I, I know it's like to, to try to find studio space is impossible. So it was really cool. It was relevant with the kids. They asked of other ways to support. So they provided swag. They got Monera's uh, backpacks and notebooks for the youth. They took care of the graduation dinner costs, which is, so there's three days of instruction for the kids. And then on the fourth night, we invite leadership, membership, family, friends, community members, and sponsors to come and take a look at the achievements of these young, young people that are going to be our future. And we, on the third day, we recorded sort of a bear's lair pitch on this is our business. So they got to choose a business and they got to choose um, the name of the business. And then they got to draw a logo of what that business represented. And from the logo, they developed their motto or their mission statement. And they talked about core values. And then we talked about products and profit margin and projections and budgets and on and on. So to put this into to kids, I mean, it's, it's amazing um, for it to watch. The, the sponsors were blown away. The, the parents were blown away because these kids, yes, you know, three days ago were watching, you know, uh, playing Fortnite and not even being able to project themselves and talk. And now they're with microphones on the stage and they, nobody knew each other. So the connection was amazing. Um, and through that, so now Moneris has a professional, we had a videographer, has a professional video of the journey of these youth from start to finish, to parent testimonials, to talking to the, to the students. And Moneris brought in their entire executive team to come and watch this. So they realized where their dollars were and they were engaged from the very beginning. And that's what makes a really good partner. It's nice to have, be able to say, here's $25,000, let us know how it went. But because of this, Mineris is gonna have an amazing relationship, a long lasting lifetime relationship with Six Nations, but also the Bears Lair from a company of mine that they sponsored. Next slide. So effective communication takes five C's, so consistent. Uh, my favorite partners and me being working for industry is consistent, regular updates. I phone people at least once a week, not to be a pest, just to say, how's it going? Or a nice like, hey, happy Tuesday. Just want to find out if there's anything going on in the summer that I could either volunteer for or I could support. Um, let me know if you need any help with anything. I have, you know, a pack of people that, that could be, you know, happy to help out in any way. Regular updates, news stories. Hey, thanks so much for that uh, for that lead uh, for procurement. Um, you know that company's working out amazing. Everybody loves them, and I like to actually um, try to develop them more. Or I would like to help out. Good news stories. 
you know, social media, which I suck at because I'm not under 30. So the Twitter and the uh, Facebook and YouTube and everything, I'm going to have to be a part of eventually, which will be in two weeks when my show comes out. But working with that invitations to events, really uh, sharing social posts with your partner. So if the Squamish Nation, for example, has their um, uh, Squamish Nation trades once a year um, fundraiser, to post that on your company's website, to blast it off to your friends and colleagues that are in an industry, your subcontractors, whoever, to get that kind of support. Clear your expectations and be transparent. So again, when we went back to the very beginning, what are the expectations? What are we capable of doing? Being transparent. Um, this worked out, this didn't work out. This entrepreneur, yeah, you might want to work on, or I've had a great experience with this person. But having an Indigenous participation plan, your expectations are right there and they're written down. And it's, I think it's the biggest tool in the, in the, in the, like the biggest tool that you can possibly have. So there's no miscommunication. Facts, right people and all the people. So when I say facts, right people and all the people, when I uh, approach a nation from an industry side, you need to know who you're talking to. So who's in the meeting? And everybody knows this, I'm sure. Who's in the meeting? What's the governance of the nation? Who are the decision makers? Who are the right people? Am I inviting people? So am I only inviting leadership to an event of mine? Or should I be inviting um, someone in communications or that does the social media for the nation or should I invite uh, the recreation or health and wellness or maybe I should invite a couple of elders um, to something to an event that I'm doing if, if the Squamish nation is one of my partners or say with or Musqueam or whatever nation it may be. So the right people knowing the governments, knowing the population, knowing the territory, knowing the right people and all the people and finding out if there is a business directory as well and, and just being clear on the, on the skill sets of that nation. Um, what are their gifts? Are they land rich? Are they, you know, so do they have territories? Is there capital projects on there? So just having a lot of research done and information and it goes a long way. I've been at a table where um, in North Vancouver, people uh, were so confused because they thought that the Squamish nation was just Squamish. So. Um, information is key. Consider it. So local events, supporting local events. So every nation has, a, we, they, has their own events. Musqueam Day, the Squamish Nation powwow. They have um, different events that are going to support the community. The Squamish Nation trade uh, event fundraiser. Um, something to support youth for all, nation, all native basketball tournaments, etc. So find out the local events. Um, get a calendar, sit down with your partnerships, get a calendar and say, you know, we'd like to support some of these events, but we just want to be apprised to what they are and find and buy local. So my, what I loved and my advice to a lot of proponents that were coming in to present their businesses were to say, you know, are you looking for an installation of art within your office? Are you looking for any kind of corporate gifting? Um, as Christmas comes along, do you want to maybe put an all staff email saying, hey, if anyone's looking for some authentic indigenous art that's within the, the territories that we live, eat, breathe, work, here's a list of, uh, of entrepreneurs and products that you might be interested in their contact information. Any kind of um, seasonal events, uh, timelines and emergencies. Know that uh, part of being considerate is knowing that sometimes, um, unfortunately, within nations, there are sudden deaths. Um, the whole nation usually shuts down for that. The office closes. Uh, meetings are canceled at the last minute because of that. So be mindful of that as well. Uh, culturally relevant. So protocols, land acknowledgements, knowing the territory that you're on. Um, when you start your conversation, as everybody knows, I like to acknowledge the territories that I'm in, that I'm in right now, whether you're on the road or in and finding that out beforehand. Um, the place that you are, community names, whether it's a traditional name or regular name, and just be, be mindful. 
of and just be respectful. There was a lot of, you know, and on in Coast Salish, you know, and on the territories out here, we we do this, you know, it's it's we're grateful and we appreciate you, et cetera. But no, that's not the same way that it is in Ontario. So really knowing the acknowledgement place, community names, who's uh, who is your liaison, who you're working with, et cetera. And next. So, um, Osiam, thank you. So benefits and ways to re-engage through networking. And when I network, when I, when I really focus, and I'll bring this back to the beginning, when I really focus on attending events, I focus on the target market of who that event is attracting. I take a look, for example, and I'm gonna use the uh, NABOC for an example because Jeff Greenwell is very good at what he does and he's the organizer and owner. And he puts out a delegate list of who's coming. So if I wanna work with different nations, then I can do an internal highlight of who I would like to speak to um, when I get there and who I would like to find through networking and consistency, consistent, consistent. So if you're gonna to go to, you know, and this is mindful of, of budgetary restrictions, et cetera, but if you really focus on consistent um, optical um, engagement of, of being somewhere. So attend the NABOX if they work for you, that's super. Aboriginal business matches, if they work for you, can do if they work for you. The Canadian Council for Aboriginal Business um, their networking events, which they're um, they're going to plug because they're they're having an event out here out west, I think on October sixth, and uh, or the AFN. The more people see you, the more people are going to recognize you. The more people are going to be intrigued with who you are, what you do, who your network is, and how we can grow with each other. And building authentic relationships, as I mentioned, it's a two way street. So as industry, what can I do to assist you in the best way? And being from the nation side, how can I build a package together so that I can authentically engage with industry so that I have my directory out? I have my list of partnerships. I have my MOUs ready. I have everything I have everything ready so that we can do this like this, right? We don't have to go to different levels and just communicate more effectively. Like, let's not just talk when there is a Zoom meeting. Let's not talk when uh, we see each other at events. You know, it's, it's so nice um, being an economic development officer for 13 years that I was to have people just, hey, haven't talked in a while. It's been a couple of weeks. Just wanted to find out how you're doing and how your kids are and if there's anything that uh, that we can do or any events we're coming up that we should know about that maybe we can help out with or attend. It's all relationship building and um, really focusing on um, uplifting Indigenous nations, uplifting industry that um, wants to do more, be better and know more um, about either side. So I guess that's it for me. Osiem, any questions? Where's Elsie? 